Hello, welcome to the Monday, October 15th, 2018 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from McLean, Virginia. I have mentioned several times in this podcast how important it is to track dependencies in your applications, in particular third-party libraries that you are including in your code. Now, often the focus here is open source libraries, but it affects commercial libraries just as well. One recent example is branch.io. Branch.io allows mobile applications to track users and essentially get things like refer statistics and the like. And apparently their library suffered from a cross-site script vulnerability. This issue was first discovered at the dating site Tinder, but then as it became known that branch.io's code was actually the vulnerable code, it turned out that many, many other sites are affected by the same vulnerability, potentially affecting hundreds of millions of users. Now you may say, hey, it's just a cross-site scripting vulnerability, but don't underestimate cross-site scripting vulnerabilities. This particular vulnerability was exploitable on personal profile pages. So this could certainly be used to either leak personal information or to even take over accounts. And pacemaker manufacturer Medtronic is in the news again regarding the programmers for their pacemakers. This is actually an older vulnerability. I believe it was discovered back in February and it affects these programmers. So it doesn't affect the pacemaker itself, but these programmers are used to configure pacemakers. And up to now, it was possible to remotely update these programmers, but apparently this update process wasn't secure. Now, the original fix was to just use a VPN for the update. And the way this apparently worked was that the programmer did establish a VPN connection to Medtronic's software delivery network, and then the update happened. The problem was that the VPN could become disconnected and the update would still proceed, which then again exposed the vulnerable update process. So Medtronic's solution at this point, Medtronic's disabled any remote updates and any future updates will now have to be applied in person by a Medtronic's representative who will use a secured USB stick. Now, they're not really stating here how this USB stick is secured, but I assume that a good part of the security here is that this particular USB stick will be only in the possession of this Medtronic's representative. And last week, IBM had to withdraw a patch that was originally released on September 5th and fixed a vulnerability in the IBM WebSphere server. This vulnerability was one of those Java deserialization vulnerabilities that we have seen exploited quite aggressively lately. Now, I did a quick look at this vulnerability before recording and didn't see any specific exploit for this vulnerability, CVE 2018-1567. So IBM earlier last week did withdraw the original patch, but the next day, it was uh, Thursday or Friday, I believe, they came back with an updated patch that should again keep your system safe and avoid the regression that was observed in the earlier September patch. The vulnerability itself had a CVSS score of 9.8 and would allow an attacker to execute arbitrary Java code. And one of the higher profile patches that Microsoft released last week as part of Patch Tuesday was the fix for the write out of bounds error in the JET database. Well, apparently Microsoft didn't fully patch the vulnerability. So Zero Patch, a company that sort of makes a name for itself by coming out with its own micro patch, as they call it, has released such a micro patch to hopefully patch JET for good. 
Micro patches released by Zero Patch will be applied in memory, so they don't require a system restart. They will also, and I think it's actually usually a good thing, they will be overwritten by any final patches the vendor comes up with. Of course, in this particular case, if you had a micro patch installed, then installed the not quite correct Microsoft patch, well, then you're vulnerable again. So you have to apply this newer micro patch. Now, overall, I don't really want to sound like I'm endorsing any of these third party patches. That's something you have to figure out for yourself, how high you think the risk is of the exposure that this JET database vulnerability presents to you and how much of a risk it is to install third party patches that the vendor may not be considering when they then release their own patch. Well, that's it for today. And by the way, on Tuesday evening, I'll be speaking here about some of the changes to DNS and such, uh, how some of these protocols are being encrypted in the future. So if you're interested in any of this as usual, yes, you may attend, but uh, please drop me a note ahead of time so I get a feel for how many people do want to attend and how many people we can accommodate here. So this would be Tuesday evening here in McLean or also Tyson's Corner area. That's it. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.